I need to find out from you guys. I need to find out from you guys as well what you guys think about this because I feel like this video is pretty interesting because a part of me, a part of me wants to be charitable and somewhat understanding of this because I'm a fan of things and I think being a fan of things is really cool and I feel like being into people and liking what people do and kind of being, um, and kind of acknowledging it and kind of acknowledging them in person is also really important even though kind of the things that i like when it comes to like fashion when it comes to streetwear when it comes to dance music when it comes to design when it comes to art a lot of people in those kind of fields are really big cunts and it can be very difficult to try and be a fan of them because sometimes when you meet these people in real life they can sometimes turn you off so i usually abide by the rule of just never never meeting my heroes right and just kind of or heroes as brendan would say and kind of admiring them from afar and just loving the work that they do and also you know i'm, I'm kind of I, I say i'm mature enough to understand how i can separate the art from the artist i'm really much in that kind of vein i'm not really too bothered about what people do in their personal life as long as it's not something super crazy i can kind of forgive everything and kind of focus on the art itself but the internet doesn't seem to like when people are really are kind of overly fanatical about things when even when it comes to like stands and k-pop and stuff or people that like pop stars most of the internet doesn't really like those people right they kind of live in their own little world but for the most part most parts of the internet kind of despise any level of standom because it just comes across gross now the other part of standom is this podcasting stand up start stand them thing that exists right where certain guys who have kind of become successful just through the medium of just talking to a microphone like i'm doing have now kind of acquired this position in culture and society that probably is a little bit overblown for what they do right they're still important you know for people's lives and whatnot they contribute to some respect but essentially just sitting down on a microphone and talking at length to people um, about certain topics and whatnot really shouldn't put you in a position where people are like oh my god i'm so reverent of you and whatnot because it's not really that big of a deal but someone like a rogan of course kind of is a bit rare in that case because he's kind of a bit of a you know um He's a, he's a leader in this sort of industry and clearly somebody that's done a lot of good and definitely i'm a big fan of the jre still i you know it was definitely the first sort of like major show i kind of watched when i first got into the podcast i think i started listening to jre in the early 400s type of time zone so i was fairly you know new to it i was fairly kind of new to it as well as most people were and whatnot and i kind of followed his entire journey throughout and i feel like he gets you know overall he probably has the best um show in terms of pound for pound in terms of guests week in week out in terms of the interesting people that kind of get on there and whatnot but the way some of these comedians act around him and maybe some guests is a little bit nauseating and i feel like a good example was obviously the recent episode with andrew schultz because it felt like andrew schultz really went out of his way this episode to really kind of you know um bow at the feet of rogan and remind him just how much of a big dog he thinks he is and whatnot and kind of validate a lot of the nonsense that rogan speaks about especially when it comes to like ice baths and whatnot now what i wanted to say about this clip is that can you be a fan of somebody without people thinking you're sucking them off and is that a fair interpretation of the, of what you were seeing schultz do here or is this just what people do if you happen to have a friend that's like rogan level it's what you do like i don't know but this is a clip of um andrew schultz basically pontificating on the importance of ice baths and whether or not a cold plunge has re has replaced religion in modern society yes you heard that right he's ar arguing or pontificating on the idea that you know dunking your balls into a cold tub of water has somehow replaced um the meaning and the guidance that people sometimes feel in flipping religion crazy I don't know. I just feel like it's a function of like what humans might need. Like I almost think about like, like what is popular now in, in society and culture, like these, these figures, like Jordan is a perfect example. Like you're a perfect example. Like I think we, as, as Americans have kind of like left religion, we still need the structure. Yeah. And like, even like telling somebody to get in an ice bath in the morning, like that's a religious act. Maybe it's not done for God. 
but there's a consistency there. There's something that you do that makes you feel good. Like, I feel like we found a way to like a la carte the different structures that religion provided us now that we don't have religion. Yeah, I'm glad you said that about the ice pack because I think that sometimes uh, it is a ritual for me. And it's also, <laughs> of course you say that, Rogan. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Is he suck? Is he sucking Rogan off? Or is he just being a really f a, a fan? And can you just be, is it, is it possible to be a fan without being corny like this? I don't know, man. But I also think that maybe this medium of podcasting, because you just want to fill in dead air, it makes, it basically makes you want to just like, you know, think that you're, you're, I don't know, like, uh, explain things that don't even need to be explained. Right? And kind of, pontificate on the most nonsense topics but some part of me also feels like shouldn't you if you're in this position and rogan is your pal shouldn't you be trying to remind them of their role in your life and you know being somewhat respectable respect respectful i guess and maybe kissing the ring is not really a bad thing i don't know but my initial reaction to this was definitely disgust a little bit of cringe a little bit of vomiting in my own mouth because i feel like this doesn't really serve anyone well because it doesn't make for an entertaining show it doesn't really in it doesn't really increase or add to their relationship i don't think so it kind of is what it is hey be up chris hutch i'm a zynga fan but there's no sucky sucky <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> I'm not expecting anyone to sucky sucky, but thank you so much for clarifying that if I did need someone to sucky sucky, that Chris Hutch would not be the person volunteering. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate you for the full 499 super chat, my friend. I appreciate you. But yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what I don't know what is the right way to go about things because a part of me feels like the internet's maybe blown this out of proportion because I kind of do like Andrew Schultz. I know it's kind of, you know, unpopular opinion to say so, but I still do think Andrew Schultz's first appearance on Joe Rogan when he kind of first kind of met him properly was probably one of the best kind of debuts from a comedian ever on that show. I know this is weird to say. I know, I know. I know some of these are going to be barfing him after you're going to be flipping, punching the wall. But I honestly do think Andrew did such an amazing job that first time of like proving and showing who he is talking about you know you know going against netflix and shit and then end up going netflix anyway but still that whole spiel he was doing about distributing about empowering yourself about creative you know whatever it was really i found that rah rah speech amazing i mean i was like you know cheering him on as he was trying to basically get rogan to like him and clearly rogan did end up liking him i really did think it was a really good debut from him on there but ever since then there um Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, let me refresh it. Thanks, Uche. Um, ever since then, I guess Rogan and Andrew's relationship has evolved a little bit, right? And um, I don't think he needs to do that anymore. And he's now doing it in a different way by, like, you know, kissing his feet and licking him up. And so I don't know. It just feels a little bit gross. But I also don't know what you're meant to do if you're Rogan's friend. Are you meant to neg him? Are you meant to kind of, you know, illustrate to everybody that you're not really you don't care who he is and you can say what you want to him, but then you won't get back invited back on the show again. Or do you do like what um, Lucy K done and challenge him on his ideas? But I also feel like Rogan doesn't like, even though that's the only thing I have a criticism about Rogan. I feel like Rogan doesn't interview enough people who don't agree with his way of life or his ideals or with his ideology or with his politics and whatnot. I think like, for instance, like I think, he should get on more people like Bo Burnham, like a Bo Burnham type who kind of, I'd say it's completely opposite to what Rogan is about in terms of politics and whatnot. That would be a far more interesting conversation than it would be to sit down with somebody who's essentially another Rogan, you know, um, schlong gobbler. It doesn't really work that well anymore. I feel like, for instance, like Schultz's first appearance on Rogan was good because it was fresh because he was bringing up new ideas that Rogan maybe had, hadn't thought about. But now that they're in this position, He's just another one of these kind of lackeys. It's not really the same anymore, which is why I understand a lot of people who see some of Rogan's friends as the next guest on JRE just skip those episodes because they know it's just going to turn into a an hour and a half of like sucking him off type of thing. So I wonder why Rogan doesn't do that because he, he used to be a bit more open-minded in terms of guests. 
So maybe the Rogan of a few years ago would have got a Bo Burn, a, a Bo Burnham type person on sooner. But I think I would much rather see those type of people on than see a gaggle of his, you know, comedic friends who want to suck him off there, kind of lapping him up and, you know, going out of their way to let everybody know that they're friends and stuff. It's just a bit gross. Because I think in this episode as well, Schultz says something like, oh, it was amazing, Joe, to see you be so nice with your niece and stuff. Like, it's like, it was like a weird sort of like humble brag type of thing that he's around. Like kind of like weird little signaling thing of like, hey, I'm around Joe enough where I see him communicating with his family. who He doesn't really mention that much on podcast. So that must mean I'm in the real close circle. It's like a weird thing to mention. I don't know. It's just strange anyway. It's a strange compliment anyway to give somebody. Oh, you were really lovely with your niece. It's like, yeah, it's my niece, isn't it? Like, I don't know. it's a strange compliment to give somebody. But I don't know. I don't know. Something about it is gross. And I don't know what it is about us. I don't is I don't know what it is about um as humans on a deeply anatomical physiological level where we just kind of don't respond well to people sucking people off what it what is it about us as humans where it just kind of grosses us out a little bit I don't really know or maybe it doesn't gross us maybe it's just a very small minority of people online who say these kind of things and most people don't like it but I wonder what it is about us humans in general where we can just know it's cringe and it's just like ugh yuck yuck maybe because they're meant to be his friends I don't really know because I guess you don't really do this with your friends do you even if you've got a famous friend I don't know do you suck them off is that what your friend wants from you probably not i'd imagine like if you've had a legitimate famous friend the last thing they'd want you to do is to treat them like a famous person they'd want you to be like quote unquote normal because they've had enough of being treated like ariana grande or whatever it may be do you know what i mean i don't know i don't know i don't know but it was it also wouldn't surprise me if i heard some famous people only keep you know friends around them that kind of agree with them and lick their ass as well they don't really have they don't like to have any people in their camp that disagree with them in the slightest that also wouldn't surprise me so maybe it's too far I'm not really too sure but either way um very bath inducing episode of jre especially me being a fan of Schultz. i felt like it was really kind of uncomfortable at times to listen to to him kind of go full of himself to kind of agree with him. if anything it sounded like a way more cultured version of brendan on the jre it sounded like that like a way more intelligent version of a brendan basically he was agreeing with everything joe was saying he was basically he kind of felt like he was kind of like guiding joe to answers and pre you know uh preempting what he would say to make him seem agreeable i don't know it's just it's just a bit gross I'm not gonna it's a bit gross i kind of felt a bit uncomfortable like i should leave them alone in the room together joe was like oh, turn that off but anyway um hey maybe i'm in the minority here maybe it's just what it is maybe we're all haters in general and we're over analyzing things that don't need to be analyzed who bloody knows who bloody knows 